Praise the Lord, saints. Just give him glory, give him honor because he's worthy to be praised. Jesus wants to help us this morning. He wants to make something that can seem so difficult really simple. And it's just salvation. Jesus wants to save us from our sins and from the sinful world. And he is coming. You keep hearing it over and over again because it's true. Jesus is coming. There's no time to play around with your soul. It's time to take the warning seriously. It's time to take your soul seriously. It's time to take the Lord seriously and receive his help. Um, so if you have been discouraged, if you don't know what to do, if you're confused, if you have no idea what the rapture is and you have no idea what people are talking about and you know, what is this they're saying? Jesus is coming. Well, you're going to learn all about it today. And for those of you who already know about it, but you're not acting on it, I pray this message stirs you to action that you get right with the Lord today because Jesus loves you. He wants to save you. Today's message is believe, repent, repeat. Jesus is coming. But before we get into it, let's pray. Father, right now, I just thank you because you're awesome and you're worthy to be praised. You love us and you gave your son to die for our sins. Father, help us to hear your word, to have eyes that see, ears that hear, hearts that are tender and receptive. Lord, remove all hindrances, all um, obstacles to the word of God. Lord, let us be ready for your for your um, son's re appearing and lord let us be ready for the word you have for us today help us to just be at peace have a calm spirit have a calm mind that can understand what's being spoken that can receive the word of god that can apply it in our lives and lord right now we just rebuke anything that would have come against the word and we thank you lord that you're helping us to um, be good ground that the word that you put into our hearts, Lord, we won't let anyone steal it, but we will receive it, act on it. And Lord, there'll be a great harvest from it. So we thank you in Jesus name. And also, Lord, I ask that you just take me completely out of the mix. None of me, all of you, let the people be blessed in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, so I am so thankful to finally be able to um, be able to get this message out to you. It's been quite a challenge this week, but I know it's because... The Lord is coming soon, and the, the sooner it gets to his return, you know, there's more um, resistance, but that's okay because if God is for us, who can be against us? And we have the Holy Spirit inside of us who is helping us each and every step of the way. And look at this beautiful picture. We have a person um, climbing, climbing up a, a mountain, it looks like, and someone right on the top helping. And I love this because that is Jesus Christ. He's already done the work, and he's there to help us follow in his footsteps. So today's verse we're, we're featuring is Hebrews 11:6, and it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Do you know you cannot be saved without faith without believing that God wants to save you. I mean, that's really simple, but you cannot receive anything you don't believe. So again, Lord, we're asking that you just help us to be believers, true believers this morning. Lord, not just saying we believe, but in our hearts and in our minds, just really, really trusting you and counting on you to um, do what you've promised in your word. Okay. And Let's also reference Hebrews 9, 27 through 28. It's not on your screen, but it is in the video notes. And it says, and as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many to those who wait eagerly for him. He will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. So notice that those who wait eagerly for him, he will appear a second time. So we want to be eagerly um, waiting for the Lord, not um, just in a state of pessimism and cynicism and, you know, discouragement. No, we want to be full of hope and joy and peace and love eagerly awaiting his return. So let's dig into this message. Okay, again, just reiterating the fact that Jesus, he will appear a second time and it's going to be on a normal day, just the same way. Jesus first, uh, um, the first time he came to earth and did his ministry, it was prophesied in the Bible, you know, for 
hundreds of years, hundreds of years, they were waiting on the Messiah to come. And all of these prophecies pointed to the time of, of his coming. And then when he finally arrived, many people missed it. And it will be the same way when he comes again. So Jesus will appear for those who are eagerly waiting his return. And that is before the seven year tribulation period. Um, and it's going to be on a normal day. And the reason, another reason why we understand that this is going to happen before the tribulation period is that this unique, um, this unique time where it says, you know, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the son of man. You know, um, they were eating and drinking and giving in marriage and everything was normal. You can find that the reference to what I'm, um, the scriptures I'm referring to in Matthew chapter 24. And it says they were eating and drinking and giving in marriage and everything was normal. And then all of a sudden, two were in the field. One was taken. The other was left. You know, two women were at the meal. One was taken. The other one was left. And so this is a sudden thing that happens at a normal time frame. No one's suspecting anything. Everybody's going about their normal days or, you know, getting coffee. They're going to work, you know, doing a little shopping, just like the people in this picture, just, you know, a normal scene. It could be any city in America or throughout the world, just a normal day. And that's when it happens. And so that's why I am compelled by the spirit to continue to do these videos. Each one basically is the same message. Jesus is coming. You need to be saved. You need to repent and be ready for his return. I mean, the Lord has been giving me the same message probably for the last two or three years. And, and before even that, the main message was salvation, salvation, salvation. So now it's like salvation, repent, and he's coming. <laughs> So even more, so it's just even more urgent because he's coming soon. And that's exciting because I cannot, you know, I can hardly wait for his return. I mean, it, I'm just so excited to, for that day. And I want you to be excited too. And you can really be excited when you're ready. So just again, reiterating these scriptures, let's um, look at first Thessalonians five, one through seven. And it says, because, but concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you for you yourselves know how perfect excuse me, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. Okay, so again, thieves don't make appointments, right? <laughs> when a thief comes, you know, they, they try to come when you don't know, when you're not at home, and you're not on your not on guard, right? And so Jesus is likening his return to a thief in the night, coming at a time when you don't expect, okay? Because we're supposed to be ready. And think about that. We have no reason not to be ready, right? It's been hundreds of years, uh, probably about 2000 years now, right? Since, uh, Jesus walked the earth and remember he died for our sins. He rose from the grave. He's in heaven at the right hand of the father interceding for us daily. He went to prepare a place for us that where he is there, we may be also. And you can find the reference to that in John chapter 14 verses one through four, that he went to go prepare a place for us. And he said, if it were not so, I would not tell you. So Jesus is not a liar. We need to believe that he is coming again. And we need to believe what he says. It's going to be like a thief in the night. So he says, watch and be sober. Uh, in other places in the Bible, it says, watch and pray, okay, that you be ready and that you will be counted worthy to escape all of these things that will take place on the earth. So again, the title of this message the Lord gave me is believe, repent, repeat. Now, the first thing we need to believe is he came the first time. He's coming again. Okay. If you don't believe he's coming again, you'll do nothing about it. And if you don't do anything about it, guess what? You will not be ready, but that's not going to be us. We're going to be ready at any moment so that even if, if it's tomorrow, you would be ready. Okay. And we're going to take care of that before this message is over. One of the foundational things we need to believe and salvation starts here is that we need to believe Jesus paid the price for our sins. Here we have this beautiful image of a bride and the groom and they're walking down the aisle. And if you didn't already know, 
Jesus is the bridegroom and we, the believers, are the bride. And, you know, I don't know if you have checked out the cost of weddings, but they can be quite expensive, right? Quite expensive. And our in our relationship with the Lord is no difference. It was a heavy price he had to pay to redeem us and to restore us because we are all in a sinful state ever since Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. Everyone born after that was born into sin, born into a sinful world. And but before then, there was complete fellowship with God the Father, you know, complete fellowship with the Lord. You could talk to the Lord, you could see him, interact with him. You know, it was paradise on earth. There was no sin in the world. They didn't die. They didn't get old. They didn't have pain. They didn't have suffering. And then they decided to do things their own way. And from that point on, sin entered the world. And now, because we're all the offspring of those individuals, Adam and Eve, we all have been born into sin with a tendency to choose evil over good. And that is a problem because we have a holy God and he is not going to allow anything unclean or unholy in his presence. So there had to be a separation. So our sin has separated us from God. But Jesus died to bring us back into relationship with God. And um, he brought us back into relationship with God using the symbolism of marriage just as if you aren't part of a family and you want to be part of a family one way to to become part of that family is through marriage and so that's what jesus did for us he decided he said you know what they sinned and they're not in a relationship anymore but i am going to marry them and when they when they agree to marry me then they will have my name and then they'll be come back into the family through me. And so in that way, Jesus has decided to cover us by giving us his name and he died to do it. So look at the images below. It shows three important scenes. Um, it shows Jesus standing before Pilate and, and being judged and he's, you know, condemning him to, to death. And you see, he's already has the, the marks on his back. He was beaten and bruised for our sins. And um, the second image, it shows where the nail was, um, the nails were, were driven through his hands and he was nailed to the cross for our sins. And so this punishment, this price for sin, it was paid by Jesus. You know, we're the ones that deserve to be beaten. We're the ones who deserve to die because we're the ones who sinned. He was an innocent man, lived a perfectly innocent life. He's the son of God and the son of man. So then we see the final picture where he actually is on the cross. He's crucified. And they're standing around watching, but that's not the end of the story. On the third day, he rose from the grave with all power in his hand because he was innocent. Hell had no right to keep him there. And he rose from the dead with all power in his hands with the keys to death and hell. And so he is the only one who can get us out of that punishment of death and hell. So we have to make that decision to receive Christ before we die. It's too late afterwards. And then... This is another thing that's important for our generation. We need to make that decision to receive him into our life before we die and before he returns for his church. Because if we don't receive him before he returns for the believers, his church, then we're going to have to go through a very, very difficult time here on earth called the seven year tribulation. And that time frame is right on the our doorsteps. We're, it's very um soon and so no one needs to just put off the decision to have jesus in their life at anymore i mean do it right now we're going to make sure we pray and make sure you understand what needs to happen to ask jesus into your life and to receive him as savior but again just the most basic thing is believe jesus paid the price for your sins even if you don't totally understand it you know that you've sinned and that you need help. You know that there's things that you do that you don't want to do and you can't stop. That's the sin nature controlling you. Jesus died so that you can overcome that sin nature. Let's learn a little bit more. Okay, so here we have this beautiful picture of a bride in a gorgeous white gown. And that brings us to point number two. We need to keep our garment clean remember we just talked about we need to believe that jesus died on the cross for our sins once um we believe jesus died on the cross for our sins and we ask him into our life as our to be our savior we ask him to forgive us our sins to cleanse us of all unrighteousness and to um 
bring us into relation back into relationship with the father to fill us with his holy spirit and we receive that salvation then he gives us a beautiful white robe and um often in the bible the symbolism of course is is the bride with a beautiful you know the bride of course wears normally a beautiful white gown so we have this beautiful white gown now imagine you are this bride and you have to go to work you have to go um you know throughout the day in your beautiful white dress and you are charged with keeping it clean so if you got to take the train if you got to take the bus if you have to go to school um you know whatever wherever you go you have this beautiful white gown on now imagine how difficult it can be to keep something like that clean i mean if you have a pet you know before you can even get out the house you know they're jumping on you you got little paw marks everywhere or or you know a little child or someone um is going by you and they have you know a cup of juice and they spill that on you then you get outside and a car drives by they splash mud all over you well you know that's how it is in the world the world is a dirty place all kinds of things are going on um and we're just exposed to that and so we in the midst of that we have to keep our garments clean so how do we do that the lord has made a way so we're not to worry he he knows this world is a dirty place and even though we've received him there's still that we still have a flesh that that wants to sin we haven't trained our mind yet to you know resist temptation completely but we're working on it right but sometimes you may you may sin you may sin still and when you do that's like a stain on your gown. So we need to know how to get those stains out. So um, let's look at another scripture here. It, it comes from 1 John 2, 16 through 18. And it says, do not love the world or the things that belong to the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the father is not in him for everything that belongs to the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride in one's lifestyle is not from the father but is from the world and the world with its lust is passing away but the one who does god's will remains forever so this is the interesting thing to think about here you know a lot of times we think about sin we think about things like murder adultery you know um stealing all of those things but the Lord just named some things here that are sins that sometimes we don't think of. And it's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride in one's lifestyle. And so, especially that one, the pride in one's lifestyle. It says that's not from the Father, but of the world. So let's park, let's camp out here for a second. Pride in one's lifestyle, what does that look like? That looks like, you know, having confidence in things other than than God other than the Lord putting your confidence you know in your bank account putting your confidence in how you dress or how you appear putting your confidence in your accomplishments you know your education putting putting your trust in someone other than the Lord putting your trust in say your your spouse you marry that person you always wanted to marry and you just love them so much you know you really depend on them more than the Lord you don't go to the Lord you go to your spouse or you don't go to the Lord you go to a friend you don't go to the Lord you go to some religious leader with all your problems right God doesn't want that I mean we're here to as brothers and sisters in Christ to love one another to support one another but we're not each we're not um, supposed to be a God or or you know someone on a pedestal leading you know the only person who has that high place is is God and he wants no one else on the throne of your life so make sure you know that we don't put um, confidence or pride in anything else other than the Lord and so um, when we do that if we do something like that you know that's a sin it's a stain on our garment but the Lord has already made a way for us to get the stains out let's read Ephesians 5 25 through 30 and it says husbands love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her to make her holy cleansing her with the washing of water by the word he did this to present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or anything like that but holy and blameless in the same way husbands are to love their wives as their own bodies he who loves his wife loves himself for no one ever hates his own flesh but provides and cares for it just as Christ does for the church since we are members of his body and again you know Jesus brought us into the family of God through marriage. So when we have his name, you know, we're covered by him, you know, we're under his authority. Another symbolism Jesus used in the Bible is that we are actually his body. 
we're his body. So we are a part of him. So when we want to go to the father in prayer, the Lord, the, he doesn't see our mistakes, our, our shortcomings, our faults. He sees Jesus Christ, the perfect son of God in whom he was well pleased. Okay, that's who he sees coming to the throne when we're in Christ. And so that's why we can have confidence when we pray that our prayers are answered. Because when we pray, we're praying in the name of Jesus. That means Jesus' perfect record is coming up to the Father. And, and the Father's like, of course that's granted. Because my beloved son is is presenting me with this. And we're in his body. We are the body of Christ. So um, there's two comparisons that the word shows us here that we're considered like the bride of Christ and also the body of Christ. And if we should happen to sin and get um, a stain on our garment, he's made a way for us to correct that. And we can get some Holy Ghost spot cleaners. So let's learn about how we take um, use a spiritual spot cleaner. Oh, look at this. Does he look sad or what? He looks pretty sorry, right? This is look a, a very sad puppy. He is sorry. And you know, that's how we can be sometimes. You know, we 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 um disappoint ourselves. The Lord knows everything we're gonna do. So he's really not um a surprise at all at anything we do when we sin. He knows that we're in process, that he is making us holy even although he's already given us his righteousness he knows that we are still in training and he's working with us and so the way that we get those spots out of our garment is through repentance and repentance simply means that when we acknowledge our sins and we say lord i acknowledge my sin forgive me i turn from these sins lord help me to not make these same mistakes over these same sins over and over again um and so this is the thing with repentance you know we can repent and receive grace to help and so grace is not just simply forgiveness of what we've done in the past certainly it is that but it's also grace is the power to change power to not continue in the same sin jesus knows if we're really sincere he's got he knows everything he knows the hearts so we can't fool him with whether we've repented or not okay so this is um let's read john 2 and it says uh, john 2 verse 2 it says, my little children, I am writing you these things so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He himself is the propitiation for our sins and not only for ours, but also for those of the whole world. And I'm looking at the scripture reference there. Um, I will correct that if it is not correct. But um, from John chapter two, it says, my little children, I am writing you these things so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. I had to read that just again, because that is so powerful. If you do sin, he says he doesn't want us to. But if you do. We have an advocate with Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And propitiation simply means he's the payment for the sins, not just ours, but the whole world. I mean, Jesus paid a high price. You know, he's the son of God, gave his life for us. And that the price, that price he paid, it's been accepted by the father. And so we have forgiveness through Jesus Christ. And I'm going to see if I can pull up one of my favorite verses now that I just love so much and it comes from hebrews 10 and it's verse 14 i'm going to see and i don't have i'm going to see if i can just quote it by heart it's one of my favorite ones and it says he has perfected by one offering he has perfected forever those whom he is making holy okay so that's hebrews 10 14 if i did not quote it correctly just know it says by one offering he has perfected forever those whom he is making holy. That is the summary of it. And in the video notes, I will have the exact um, scripture verbatim, ver verbatim. So make sure you do check the description box and download the video notes. And I always have those because if I come up with any scripture that I don't have on screen, then I put it in those video notes. You can to download it and follow along. But again, you know, that's just encouragement because while we are learning um, to resist temptation, learning how to choose good over evil. We have provision that's already been made for us through Jesus Christ. So he's like, continue, you know, um, we can continue in our salvation. We don't have to be afraid or be discouraged. And, you know, we don't have to walk downcast and sullen and in 
insecurity. No, we can be confident because Jesus has paid the price of our sins. He said, if, you know, first John one and nine says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And remember the title of this message is believe, repent, repeat. So if we want to be ready for the Lord's return, that's just a daily part of our life, believing in the Lord Jesus, believing his power to save us, to save us from sin. If we sin, we repent and then we repeat. Okay. That's just our lifestyle. That's where we should be right now. After you receive Christ, you um, get close to God, read the word. Remember, we just read how he cleanses us by the washing of the war, um, the washing of the water of the word of God, the war, the word of God actually renews our mind and it cleanses us. You know, it, it, gives us the right perspective you know we may think one thing is okay we read the word of god and we find out oh no that's not okay when god's sight and we, we discover we need to change okay so the water of the word of god it actually cleanses us it cleanses our mindset it gives us the mindset of christ so you want to make sure you stay in your word and you stay in prayer not just going to god asking for things or even repenting but going into prayer just fellowship with him talking to god learning um, who he is, asking him questions, getting to know the Lord, just make it a joy, make your relationship with the Lord a joy because he loves to talk to you. Think about how you would talk to your father or a friend because he is all of that to you. And, and even more, he's the groom, he's the father, he's a friend, he's the comforter, he's our healer, he's everything. So just go to him and enjoy your relationship with the Lord, knowing that he's not holding every little thing you do against um, you because he's already made provision for you to receive forgiveness. You just need to acknowledge your sin. That's all I need to do. Acknowledge our, you know, acknowledge when we sin, repent, ask for help, and he will give it to us every single time. So let's keep um, learning more. Okay, now here's the last part of that instruction. Remember the message is believe, repent, repeat. So here we are on repeat. And we have this picture here of the trainer working, um, helping this woman. He's assisting her while she's lifting weights and she's getting quite strong there, doing a great job. And think about if you want to build muscle, how um, you have to work out daily, right? It's not a one time thing. You um, you do repetitions. So it's not like once we come into Christ, we're suddenly perfect. No, it's like getting that uh, membership to the gym. Okay. Yeah. You're a member now, but now you need to come in and actually take class and work out. Okay. <laughs> Cause if you don't do that, you won't look any different than the day you join. So when you join the gym, okay. Somebody's like, Oh, I'm getting on it. Okay. Don't worry about it. We've all been there. Once you join the gym, you actually need to go and take class and work out to get the results. Okay. So to become strong Christians, we need to, um, let the Holy Spirit work us out. How does he work us out? He brings us, um, he corrects us, okay? He corrects us and he comforts us and he um, brings us, um, brings all truth to our remembrance. Let's read Hebrews 12, 6 through 13. Um, that is not on your, on your screen, but it is in the video notes. And it reads this way. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and punishes every son he receives. Endure suffering as a discipline. God is dealing with you as sons. For what son is there that a father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, which all receive, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we had natural fathers discipline us and we respected them. Shouldn't we submit even more to the father of spirits and live for they disciplined us for a short time based on what seemed good to them, but he does it for our benefit so that we can share his holiness. No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful later on. However, it yields the fruit of peace and righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your tired hands and weakened knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but healed instead. So I love that. That is just like the, 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 um, go to the gym and get your workout scripture to me. I mean, he said, listen, um, think about this. When you go to a personal trainer, they do not take it easy on you. That's why you hired them, right? Because they won't let you quit as soon as you get a little uncomfortable. And as soon as you feel a little achiness, they won't let you stop. They're like, no, give me eight more. Do two more sets. <laughs> Come on, you got this. Do it. That's how the Holy Spirit is with us. He trains us, right? He is not going to um, accept those excuses, those justifications. He's like, nope. 
I, the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. He knows that we can do it because he's inside of us, helping us. And he is training us to live holy. Okay, Hebrews 10, 14. Here's that scripture I was looking for. It says, by, for by one offering, he has perfected forever those being made holy. So I almost had it. Again, I'll read it. This is one of my favorite ones right now. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those being made holy. So this is Jesus who's paid your um you paid your uh, lifetime membership to the gym. Now you just need to keep coming in and, and, and getting strong, all right? First John 2, 3 through um, 6 here, it reads, this is how we are sure that we have come to know him. Okay, pay attention to this scripture because some people, sometimes you're like, well, I asked Jesus into my life and I asked for forgiveness. How can I tell if I'm really forgiven? How can I tell if I'm really saved? We got to trust the word. Okay, we have to trust the word of God. And then also this scripture here gives us some more um, insight. It says, this is how we are sure that we have come to know him by keeping his commands. The one who says I have come to know him yet doesn't keep his commands is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word truly in him, the love of God is perfected. This is how we know we are in him. The one who says he remains in him should walk just as he walked. So obviously up these two scriptures are here side by side because they are bookends and they seem to contradict each other, but they don't. This is this is the balance in the scripture. OK, on one hand, God says, all right. If you're in Christ, you would keep his commands. But at the same time, you know, but I, I don't do everything exactly right every day. I mean, there's probably some sin that you do every day that I do every day, even if it's just a thought or a wrong attitude. It's something that's not um, just perfect in God's sight. And so how are we to reconcile that with the fact that we're saved? If you're like, well, if I'm saved, I'm not supposed to be sinning. No, remember Hebrews 10, 14. Jesus paid the price for our sins by that one offering. He's perfected us forever. We're, his body, we're in him. When the Father looks at us, he sees Jesus Christ. But at the same time, we're on earth in a flesh, and we have a soul that has not been renewed, a mindset that has not been renewed. So while we have that lifetime membership, we are being made holy. Now, the only way that you can lose that is if you quit and drop out. You say, I don't want this anymore. And you walk away. That's how you lose it. And people do do that. But if you love the Lord, why would you want to do that? And that choice is solely up to you. Okay. It's solely up to you. So if you want to be saved, if you want to be kept, the Lord is keeping you and you can be confident and you can just um, relax in your salvation, knowing that the Lord has paid the price for your sins. And then make sure though, that you are Staying in relationship to the Lord, with the Lord, not putting anything ahead of him, not, you know, just getting caught up in the world and the sins in the world. No, we are renewing our minds so that we, we're not loving the things of the world, but we're loving the things that God loves. OK, and that's what verse six says. The one who says he remains in him and that's Jesus Christ should walk just as he walks. So we want to live in this world the way Jesus lived and so we every day get up ready to work out ready to train and to walk the way jesus walked okay the best part the best part is knowing that listen jesus will appear he's coming soon uh I can't stress to you enough, just because you heard this warning a lot, don't take it lightly. I mean, you should be ready today. You should be ready today to meet the Lord. And all you need to do is believe, repent, repeat. If you have never asked Jesus into your life, let's pray and do that right now. And just say, Lord, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I asking you, Father, to forgive me of my sins. I'm coming to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of my sins, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to walk as Jesus walked. Help me to, Lord, do those things that please you. And Lord, we just thank you right now. We honor you and we commit our lives into your care, knowing that your word is true and that we have confidence confidence in our salvation through your son jesus christ if you pray that prayer with me and you meant it and remember jesus knows when we mean something or not the lord knows when we mean something or not if you meant it you are saved and so what are the next steps because someone i saw a comment in the, um in one of the video just um with one of the videos saying that okay what's next they receive salvation what's next the next steps are to um begin reading your bible every day just like when a baby is born 
you don't just leave the baby and, and don't do anything. No, when the baby is born, you want to feed the baby, right? So you're, if you're born again and you're newly born again, your spirit is new, just like a newborn babe, and you want to feed your spirit the word of God. You want to um, find a church or a local group of believers or a prayer group or some other Christians you can fellowship so you aren't just out there by yourself but that you have fellowship with other people who love God where you read the Bible together study together pray together um encourage one another rebuke one another if you need to if you see someone going astray you know that's the importance of accountability and relationship okay so get connected with the group of other believers so you can strengthen one another and grow in faith together um if you sin repent you know every day just Put the Lord first, talk to him, you know, throughout the day, praise him, worship him. And that those are the next steps, just growing in your relationship with the Lord. Um, right there on screen, you'll see if you ju did just get saved, you can visit do not go to hell dot com backslash just saved. And there's a a list uh, with links and resources you can go to to help you um on this new exciting wonderful journey with Christ okay and if you did not say the prayer with me but later on you do want to um, pray and ask Jesus into your heart there's a sample prayer there in the scriptures that support salvation at do not go to hell.com backslash no Jesus so again don't delay don't play around with your salvation because Hebrews 10 37 through 39 says for yet a little while and he who is coming will come and will not tarry now the just shall live by faith but if anyone draws back my soul has no pleasure in him but we are not of those who draw back to perdition but of those who believe to the saving of the soul so jesus loves you so much he wants to save you he's there helping you out remember you want to believe repent repeat that's where um we are to to be in our, our walk with god just from now on out believe repent repeat okay you do that, you'll be ready for him, okay? So, I love you. I hope you have a blessed week. Continue to pray for me. I'm praying for you. And be encouraged. Do not doubt your salvation. Believe. And this is the other thing I want to stress. When the Lord comes, you have to have faith. You have to believe. You cannot receive anything without believing. Um, I don't believe you're even ready for the rapture, according to the scriptures, if you don't believe. Because... That scripture we read at the very beginning, Hebrews 11, 6 says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those who come to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if you want to come to God, it says you must believe. But you know what? That's nothing to be afraid of because you control whether you believe or not. OK, and this is a I'll give you a little tip that the Lord gave to me. Just don't allow doubt into your life. Doubt is also um, is, is considered evil. Unbelief is considered evil, according to scriptures um, in Hebrews chapter three. He calls unb unbelief and like it evil. He says, don't have an evil heart of unbelief. OK, so if you feel yourself doubting, rebuke it just like you would lust or any other thing you rebuke you said no I'll rebuke that down in the name of jesus i'm a believer i'm full of faith um the lord is not slack concerning his promise i trust him i trust his word and i refuse to let doubt in my life so you re you rebuke doubt like it's a sin because doubt is a sin there's no reason for us to um doubt the lord so again when you feel doubt coming your way rebuke it because guess what a little doubt leads to more doubt but on the other hand Faith leads to more faith. So practice faith-filled thoughts, okay? Don't dwell on anything. Don't dwell on fear. Don't dwell on unbelief. And don't dwell on um, even your past mistakes. The enemy sometimes would throw your past mistakes or your shortcomings up in your face and make you have that guilty conscience. Well, Jesus died not only to um, forgive you of your sins, but to remove the guilty conscience so that you can know that when you come to God the Father, you don't have to come to him guilty because Jesus has paid the price for your sins. Now, what you do want to do is come to to um, God humble, acknowledging your sins, knowing that he is just and faithful to forgive you. But you don't want to dwell in guilt because if you are dwelling in a guilt, a place of guilt and condemnation and fear and doubt, you will feel so far from God. You will feel like you're not even saved. So. The way to, rem to remedy that is to say, Lord, forgive me 
of being doubting for, for, for doubting you for Lord, forgive me of being fearful. Forgive me of, um, not believing that you really did die for my sins, that you really did cover me. Just Lord, forgive me of that. And Lord, renew a right spirit in me. Lord, help me to be confident in you. Lord, help me to grow in you and help me to love you more and get closer to you. Okay. So when you do that, that'll restore that connection with God. But again, do not dwell in doubt, fear, and unbelief. Okay. So that's my last tip for the day. I love you. Have a blessed week and, um, stay ready, stay ready. Cause he is coming soon.